morning. I'm Sally Harrison with Mesa Chamber of Commerce, and um, we're excited today to have our friend Josh Stein. He's the Director of External Affairs with the Boys and Girls Club of the Valley. He's with us. Um, we're doing a podcast on Zoom, and Josh is here to talk to us more about the Boys and Girls Club and answer a few questions that I have for him this morning. So Josh, why don't you give us a little background on yourself and the Boys and Girls Clubs? Great. Thank you, Sally. Thanks for having um, the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Valley and myself on this morning to talk about the work we do in the community. Um, I've been with the Boys and Girls Clubs for 15 years. Um, I started working out right out of college in one of our branches um, and kind of over the years progressed up through the clubs in, into our administration office and now doing external affairs for the Boys and Girls Clubs. We have um, 27 locations throughout the Valley um, serving youth ages 6 to 18. Um, we provide affordable after school care um, for youth and youth development, um, focus around academic success, healthy lifestyles, good character and citizenship, the arts, and now we have a focus on workforce and career readiness for our youth as well. Great. Well, today we're going to focus on the latter part of that. We're going to talk about uh, workforce. So can you talk about what AZ Youth Force is? Yes, yeah, so some of the Boys and Girls Club, we've always had um, some career readiness, career prep, workforce readiness for our youth ages 6 to 18. Um, but most of it was always club-based, a lot of career exploration within our clubs. And about two and a half years ago, we really noticed there was a need for our teenagers, our, our youth 16 to 19, to have work-based internship experiences where they could actually go out into the work environment um, and, and learn the skills they need on site and to how to operate within the workplace. Um, and doing that, we realized also that our teens really need that work experience. It needs to be paid. Um, a, a lot of our teens are potentially need to work part-time jobs to help themselves and help their families. So we ensure that we didn't want the, the teens to have to choose between doing an internship that really furthers their career development or just taking a part-time job to help their family. Um, so we created AZ Youth Force, um, again, which is a workforce development career pathway program where we bring teens in. Um, we do an academy training where the, the kids work on soft skills, essential skills, and then they go through a paid internship, which is typically eight weeks long. Great. Can you talk about why internships for teens are so important? Yeah, we really need um, teens to have those hands-on internship experience. It motivates them to learn more um, to further their education. We really try to tie in when they're in their internship, you know, what education, what schooling, what upskilling do you need? to potentially have a career. And we're really intentional about talking to them about careers, not a job. This isn't about getting a job, this is about helping them establish their career plan for the future. Um, it helps them build their personal network. A lot of our teens, um, their parents might not be in the industries they're interested in going into for a career. So by them going into a work environment, something they're interested in with a corporation, they're building their network of, of potential people who come resume, people to reach out to for support as they go into their career field. And also builds their self-esteem. Um, no, so we, we really want them to have that opportunity to go into the work environment and, and build that self-esteem, um, that self-efficacy, so they feel like they can be sex, successful in that career moving forward with that experience. Great. Well, talk about what a great candidate for an internship looks like with AZ Youth Force. So I mentioned already, but this is really geared to those students. We, we're looking for students that are in school, in high school, potentially in college, trade school, um, as a way to further, you know, their education, their career goals. Um, <clears throat> they need to be motivated, um, willing to learn. Um, and we're also looking for, for those youth, you know, we're taking youth from all backgrounds, but we're intentionally trying to target those kids that are um, groups that have historically not had access to internships or jobs. So looking at our minority population, um, some students from lower economic social status, um, women, in the workforce, trying to give them that opportunity that hasn't always existed for them um, in the workplace. What are the uh, soft skills that teens entering the workforce will need in the future? Yeah, so we really focus on those essential skills. One thing we've talked about with a lot of our employers um, is they've said, you know, we can teach them some of the hard skills, but the kids today aren't coming with those essential skills they need to be successful in the workplace and to continue their growth. So we really work on communication, you know, collaboration skills, critical thinking, adaptability, um, dependability, you know, persistence. If you don't get it the right time, don't give up. What do you have to do? You have to right. keep doing it and work through it. Um, conflict resolution, 
You know, if there's gonna be conflict in the workplace. You know, how do we get through that? How do we work with others? And then one of the things, cultural diversity. You know, the workforce is getting more diverse. You know, how do we work with people that come from different backgrounds, um, different ethnicities, um, different parts of the country? You know, how do we work together um, as a team? And we think all those are gonna be essential because they say right now, by 2030, 85% of the jobs are exist now that will exist in 10 years. Um, so our kids have to be adaptable. You know, they're gonna always continue to have to upskill, but these are those essential skills that are transferable to any job that they're gonna need. How does the academy teach those soft skills? So we do um, 30 hours of academy training to all of our youth before they're placed in the internship. Um, where we actually really each lesson hones in on the different essential skill where first we tell them what is this why is this an essential skill and then we put them through interactive sessions that encourages them pr to practice that um, we also bring in guest speakers to reinforce that and why it's important in the workplace and as an employee or an intern to have those skills so why is having an az youth force mentor or coach make a difference in the internship so for a lot of our, our youth or teens when they're going to an internship program, we know, you know, there'll be conflict will arise, the challenges will arise for them within the workplace. And our, our mentor is there to help support them. And our case manager is there to help support them through that process. So, you know, if they're at home and, and, and it could be something outside of the workplace, maybe they're at home and they've been your sibling that's sick and their parents want them to stay home and miss their internship to take care of the, the child, you know, we help them work through what are some steps you could take to ensure that you can still go to your internship, That's you know, great. but still make sure your, your sibling's safe at home, or maybe it's a transportation okay. barrier. You know, you know, if you're finding that you're relying on public transportation to get to work, you know, it traditionally takes you 45 minutes to get there. Let's leave an hour, 15 minutes early to ensure we're there on time. We can't have that excuse. So, you know, our staff's really there to support them to ensure that their internship's successful. And again, they're, they're building those skills they need that when they do enter the workforce, um, they're prepared. Mm -hmm. So talk about how you've changed your training regimen and the internships for the teens during the COVID-19 crisis. That's got to be, you know, a bigger challenge. Yeah, so I mean, COVID-19 really was a whirlwind for us. You know, we were planning for our summer interns, um, the place interns at Bank of America, Haskins Electric, Jiffy Loop. Um, we would started the recruitment process through our clubs and through local high schools. And the first thing we had to do, we had to move all of our because um, every teen has to be interviewed um, for the internship and selected to be part of our academy. Um, we did all the interviews, over 50 of them virtually through Zoom. So, wow. you know, we had to work with the teens to ensure they had a way to Zoom in, whether it was on their phone, on a computer, um, and we conducted all of our interviews via Zoom. Um, once we identified the candidates and selected them, we held our academy for the first time completely virtually on Zoom, where we had 20 youth um, on for four straight Saturdays, um, zoom in for eight hour blocks um, wow. and work interactively with our trainers and our staff um, through through zoom so you know we learned a lot from doing it but it was also it's a great skill for for our youth to learn because knowing that the workforce is going to look different moving forward in the future a lot of them could be relying on jobs where they are working remotely or virtually and they have to learn how to use technology at home to do their job or to zoom in you know right. i know myself personally i've been doing a lot of zoom meetings i feel like that's all that's all i do right now yeah. So in a way, I mean, through our essential skill building, we're also teaching them more about art skill and how, you know, how do you work on the technology. So it's worked out. Um, fortunately, about half the interns will be able to go into their place of work and actually work in, in the business this summer. Um, the other half will be doing virtual work uh, online. That's awesome. Great experience. What, what kinds of companies should be looking for AZ Sports interns? I would think any company that really wants to dedicate um, time and resources to really help our youth um, prepare for the workforce. We always tell our, the companies we work with, we're not necessarily building a pipeline to your business, but we're helping build a pipeline for the community to have young teens that can be employable and can start careers. Um, mm -hmm. our, our teens bring diversity to the workforce. Um, I think it can boost morale for companies. And we've got a lot of great feedback from our mentors on the work sites to talk about the impact of having that teen um, at their company, working with them, has done for their, for their team internally. Um, ones that are, are looking to build career pathways, that's one thing we really preach to our kids and talk to them is like, well, again, we're looking for a career, we're not looking for a job. And what kind of companies are there working with you? They're willing, they wanna invest in you as, as an intern, as a future employee, 
to help your career growth? You know, do they offer tuition reimbursement? Of health insurance, things that as a team that they not are always thinking about, but we're trying to get them to think about now. And I think the employers we work with, we want them to demonstrate to our interns what they do as a company and what they value as a company, which that is important. Sense. Yeah. What industries do you think teens are actually interested in? You know, right now, there's obviously What's a lot of popular in, in technology, a lot of teens in technology. Um, a lot of teams are looking for hands-on work, too. A lot of the CTE programs, a lot of the trades um, mm -hmm. are interested in getting that because a lot of the teams we serve, even if they're going to go to post-secondary education, whether it's community college, a trade school, four-year school, they all need to work um, while they're going to school. So we've had a lot of interest in automotive, you know, electrical, things, you know, even HVAC, uh, things that kids can really get hands-on experience and, and, and make a living wage for that. Um, financials, a lot of interest in, in financials with the kids. Um, but again, I think our kids, they don't know until they're really exposed to the industry. We've had kids come to us and take an internship and they thought they're going to go to college for one, for one degree. We're going to community college for a certain um, degree. And after they complete their internship, they're like, you know what, this is what I want to do. I'm changing my mind now before I'm even getting into my, you know, post-secondary education that I'm changing my thinking because I, I love this. This is what I like to do after they've had that hands-on experience. Um, I also think our, our teens are looking for companies that um, are really looking to make that social change. You know, they're very aware right now um, about the environment we live in, um, and, and they're looking for those companies that really want to make a difference. And that's from the, the teen perspective. So if a company isn't able to provide an internship, are there other ways for companies to partner with AZ Youth Force? Definitely. We, I mean, we work with companies for site visits. So any youth going through our academy and going through our internship program are required to do three site visits. What a site visit is, is we take them to different companies and they do tours of the facility. Um, they go to the facility, they see the different lines of business they have. Um, for example, we work with Leslie's Pools and people, you know, teens see the Leslie's Pool shop and they don't realize their corporate headquarters is here in Phoenix. At their corporate headquarters, there's a marketing department. You know, there's an HR department, there's an accounting department the different jobs you can have within a company and they go around and see what it takes and they hear from professionals in the field about what it takes to get where they're at. And we require that again, because our teens come to us for maybe an internship, say with Jiffy Lube, but we still want them exposed to other careers out there. Um, so employers can get involved in that. We also invite employers to come speak at our academy trainings on the essential skills. We kind of talk about how it relates to their work. Um, we do speed networking. All of our interns go through a speed networking where we bring if we have 20 interns, we bring 20 different employers in and they take, you know, about a minute and a half with each employer go around and they give their elevator speech and they talk to them. So we're always looking for companies to participate in that. Um, they can participate financially. They might not be able to have an intern themselves, but they might want to support financially to the program to help us provide additional interns. And then also for guidance, you know, we, we work with companies that will come in and do specialized trainings um, and, and give us guidance on, you know, how we can interact with teams. That's great. Sounds like there's lots of opportunities. Yes, definitely. And we're always, so, we're always looking for new ways that maybe that we haven't thought of that a company can come to us and say, hey, you know, we can't have an intern, but this is how we'd like to help. And we're always open to hear that. That's great. So what else do you want to talk about, Josh? Do you have anything else that we should um, tell our, our audience today? No, I would just say, obviously, the Boys and Girls Club, we've stayed open through the COVID-19 crisis um, to serve, you know, essential workers, um, healthcare professionals, um, first responders and really trying to be there as a resource for our community. Um, mm -hmm. We're continuing to open up additional clubs um, right now. So we did, um, we went from about 27 to 10 when it first hit just because our ratios had to change to one to nine. And we're following all CDC and Department of Health guidelines. And we continue to do that, but we're gradually opening more up because we know one of the things we've heard from our, a lot of our families in order for them to go back to work, they need a place for their kids, you know, sure. safe learn. That makes sense. Um, and I think going into the school year next year, not knowing um, what the school calendars could look like for a lot of our kids and families, um, we're going to have to extend our hours to be there as a resource for those families, um, whether it's providing access to technology for our teens to do school work, you know, from the clubs to virtually, or just to be there to provide support um, and, and really being there to support the kids from that um, emotional aspect as well. Um, you know, obviously a lot of the kids have been home going through a lot in their families and seeing what's going on in the world today, um, we really need to be there to support our youth um, and have a safe place for them to express how they're feeling um, and know that there's adults there that care for them. So I, th I think, you know, as the boys and girls of the Valley, we're committed to doing that and, and 
working with our partners in the community to, to ensure our, you know, our, our families have a safe place to send their kids. So Josh, if somebody had interest in being a mentor or one of the companies that you um, are, are looking for, how can they get a hold of you? Well, first they can go to our website. It's um, bgcaz.org. That's for Boys and Girls Clubs in Arizona, az.org. Um, there's a link on there where you can, you know, see the different, where our different club sites are at. There's a link for our volunteer services um, where they could reach out to me directly. Um, our, our number here at our, mission, our program service center is 602. 9548182 um, and we can make sure they get in touch with the right person. Like I said, we're awesome. looking for mentors, volunteers, um, any, any type of support we can get and that's again throughout our clubs we're a AZ Youth Force. And your clubs range from where to where? Our farthest east is Apache Junction, farthest west is in Avondale um, and pretty much everything in between um, except for Scottsdale area, but the rest of the valley, you know, we, we have covered. All right. So you're all encompassing. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. We have a place. Awesome. awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today. I learned a lot more. I didn't know about this program, so I appreciate the information.